In an earlier poll on our YouTube community page, we asked subscribers what type of videos they were most interested in watching on this channel. Software won by a landslide. Now it's time to give the people what they want. This is the first of four videos in a row, releasing each Friday covering this topic. Coming up in this video, I'll share with you five lesser known free and open source programs for Windows, Linux, and Mac. Let's dive right in. If you've been looking for an alternative to Microsoft Office, you have many choices. A few I've recommended in the past include LibreOffice, the free Office suite from Google, WPS Office, and many others. A strong contender to those mentioned that I highly recommend is only Office. This open source Office suite claims to be 100% compatible with Microsoft Office formats. In the testing I've done over the past few months, there were only some minor issues with images. But other than that, it was nearly perfect. To get the free edition of only Office for your computer, go to Download. You'll see editions here listed that are geared towards businesses and developers. Select Desktop Editors. You'll now see the download options for Windows, Mac, and Linux. With the program opened, this is what their alternative to Microsoft Word looks like. If you work with spreadsheets, this is their Excel alternative. And for presentations, this is their PowerPoint alternative. If you've used Microsoft Office before, you'll notice the familiar looking ribbon at the top that contains many of the same features and functions. If you prefer to use only Office Online within your favorite browser without having to download any software, that's also available on their website. The problem with free and open source video editing software like Shotcut and Kden Live is that they lack many of the high-end features most professionals need. Olive is looking to change all that. It's a new nonlinear free and open source video editor with the goal of becoming a fully featured alternative to the big hitters like Vegas Pro, Premiere Pro, and Final Cut Pro. At this time, all of it's still in early development with new features being added every month. Over the past few weeks in testing, I've encountered bugs and have wished that certain features were available at that moment. With that being said, even in its current state, Olive is already one of the best open source video editors I've used and could potentially be a game changer for those people that don't want to shell out the big bucks for an expensive program. If you're like me and prefer to use keyboard shortcuts, go to Tools and select Preferences. Click on the Keyboard tab. This is where you'll find all the shortcuts. If you don't like any of the presets, you can change them to suit your needs. Even at this early stage, if you'd like to try it out, Olive is already available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I've recommended a few password managers to you all in the past. Earlier this year, Bitwarden became my password manager of choice. Not only is it free for personal use, it's also open source and easy to use. Your passwords are stored in your own personalized vault that can be accessed anywhere from just about any device. The data stored on the Bitwarden servers is encrypted so no one from their team can even see or read your real data. To avoid showing the miscreants my real information, I've created this fake Bitwarden account. When you launch the program, you'll see your Bitwarden vault. Selecting any account listed will give you additional information. It lets you copy your username, password, and website URL, toggle the visibility of your password, and you can check to see if your password has been exposed in any data breaches. If you need to make any changes, just hit the edit icon here at the bottom. When launching the Bitwarden extension on any browser, you'll have access to your vault. In this example, I'm using Vivaldi. When creating an account on any website, click at the bottom where it says tab. Select add a login. It will pre-populate the site you're on. Just enter your username and password. If you need help creating a strong password, Click the icon to generate a new password. You can change the length and any other criteria. In the upper right, click Select. It will add it to the password field. Hit Save when you're done. Just click on the icons to copy your username and password to paste them where they're needed. I just went over a few of the basics. You can find additional help on the Bitwarden site. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, along with extensions for most of the popular browsers, and they have apps for both iOS and Android. Rufus is a free and open source utility for Windows 7 or newer that will turn an ISO into a bootable USB drive. If your system crashes, it lets you perform a system rescue, 
recover data, and even lets you work on a computer with no operating system installed. There are other programs with similar features. Over the years, Rufus is the best I've used for speed and reliability. In addition to the ISOs for Windows, Rufus also works with several ISOs for Linux, including Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, and many others. Here's how to use it. Go to the folder where you downloaded Rufus. There's no need to install it. Just right click and select Run as Administrator. To provide ample space, I recommend plugging in a drive with at least 8 gigabytes if you're working with a Windows 10 ISO. If you're working with another ISO file, you could probably get away with two or four gigabytes. Leave it on disk or ISO image. Click on select, find the ISO image on your computer. Select it and click on open. If you have a license for Windows 10, their media creation tool will let you create an ISO file and bootable USB flash drive. I just use it to download the ISO file to my computer. Rufus is far superior when creating a bootable drive. I'll put the link to this page below. To find the partition scheme for your drive, go to the search bar and type partition. Select Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. The disk I used to install my operating system on is Disk 1. So I'll right click on it and go to Properties. Click the Volumes tab here at the top. In Disk Information, you'll see the partition style is GPT. Go back to Rufus and select the appropriate partition scheme. In this case, that would be GPT. You should have no need to change anything else. Click on Start to Begin. You'll get this warning that pops up. Just be aware that moving forward with this process will reformat your USB drive. Any data you have on this drive will be destroyed. After you click OK, the process will begin. There is nothing more that you need to do. If you ever need to convert any video format from one type to another, it doesn't get any better than the free and open source transcoder, Handbrake. Some of you may have heard me talk about Handbrake before. It's great for converting a large video file into a smaller format, ripping DVDs and Blu-rays, and it will take those unusual, lesser used video types and convert them into a format that's more recognized. For this example, I'll convert an MKV file into an MP4, which is a more widely supported file type. You have the choice to open a single file or choose more than one from a folder. You can also drag a file or folder from your computer. In this case, I'll drag an MKV file from off screen into the main window. It will automatically detect the file's information, including that video's resolution. For the preset, I usually leave it on the default, which is Fast 1080p 30. Go to the Video tab, set the video codec to H.264 and use the one that's first in the list. For frame rate, I'll leave it at 30. Below that, do not leave it on peak frame rate, which in other words is the variable frame rate. This has been known to cause issues. Change it to constant frame rate. Go to the audio tab, make sure the codec selected is AAC. In the lower right, click on browse. Choose the location for your saved file and give it a name. Click on Save. When you're ready, here at the top, click Starting Code and wait for it to finish. Depending on the file type you're working with, you might want to try adjusting the other settings. Handbrake is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Thanks for watching. Links are in the description. A special thanks goes out to those of you that voted in the poll. If this video was useful for you, give it a thumbs up and share with others. And if you're new to this channel, subscribe and click the bell to stay up to date with the newest free software and other tech-related stuff here on Tech Gumbo.